क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा Hey friends in the previous topic we have discussed about that is how we can convert the fisher projection formula for d ribose into the howarth projection formula and now in this topic i am going to talk about the conversion of the fisher projection formula for l ribose into the howarth projection formula so now let's get started So friends in the previous topic we have discussed about the conversion of the d ribose and now in this topic we are going to talk about the conversion of the l ribose fisher projection formula to howarth projection formula so again the only difference that is what we could find for this one is the position of the oh group so in this case suppose as we understood that is it consists of five carbon atoms so therefore this is the first one this is the second one so in that case in between this two there are three carbon atoms that is 1 2 3 and each carbon atom that is 1 2 3 they all are the chiral carbon atoms and to which we see on the left hand side there is attachment of oh oh here also oh and here it is h so in this case we see the last carbon or the last chiral carbon atom to which we see the oh group is attached the oh group is attached on the left hand side and that's the reason that it is called as l ribose but it has been found that is this l ribose is dextro rotatory and that's the reason it is also known as l plus ribose so in this case the plus it means dextro rotatory and suppose if it is minus then it would be called as levo rotatory then it would be called as levo rotatory so that case this is basically the l plus ribose and for that we have to convert it into the howarth projection formula so for that we can write this formula into the another form that is what i'm going to talk about here that is it consisted of the first carbon atom and the first carbon atom i could write it over here as c double bond o h following the next one that is we have the second carbon atom to which basically we can see that is the oh is attached on the right hand side so that's the reason i could attach h over here and oh over here and this is the third carbon atom to which we see we can see that is the hydrogen is attached on the lower side and the oh is attached on the upper side so this is nothing but the fourth carbon atom so this is the fourth carbon atom to which we can find that is there are presence of oh h and ch2oh so i could write the hydrogen over here i could write ch2oh over here and this is how basically i could write the oh so therefore this is is the structure that is what we could convert into but this is not the howarth projection formula obviously we have to convert into a howarth projection formula but for that let me treat this with the acid so it is in presence of a proton so obviously we understand that is this carbon and this oxygen they are polar in nature and that's the reason that the oxygen rate will be negative with charge and that's the reason h plus it will attack to over here and that is how basically we can find that is there is an attachment of the oh it will be towards this one but let us understand what is the product that is what we could get once we are treating this with the acidic condition so therefore the product is oh over here this is the carbon to which basically ch2 oh was attached here there is presence of hydrogen here there is presence of carbon here also carbon and here it was carbon double bond with oxygen and to which here there is hydrogen attached but here we have also talked about the other valencies that is this carbon atom valency so here basically there is presence of oh here also there is presence of oh here there is hydrogen and here there is hydrogen to which here there was the carbonyl group that is c double bond that is i am talking about the first carbon so in that case we have treated with h plus and that is how basically the h plus ion it will be associated to this one and that is how the positive charge it will be on the oxygen atom so this is how the product has been formed but again this product is very much unstable so that case we understand that is the oxygen is that is this oh is uh, polar in nature and that is the reason that it will attack that the oxygen it will attack the carbon atom over here and that is how basically will lose a proton and this two electrons or this pair of electrons it will be on the oxygen atom and that is how basically we could convert the fisher projection formula of the l ribose to the howarth projection formula but the thing is there are two possible atoms and the two possible atoms that is what it could form is we could get 
a particular anomer in which PC we can find that is the structure is very much similar to that of the furanose. So in this case, this is the oxygen atom where it has been formed a bond with this carbon atom that is what I am talking about. To which suppose if this is carbon atom number one, this is carbon atom number two. So therefore to which we can understand there is the presence of OH on the upper side and a hydrogen on the lower one. This is carbon number three to which we see OH is on the upper side and H is over here. And here you can find that is the hydrogen is on the lower side and here we see CH2 OH is there. And suppose if there is a configuration or there is a special arrangement of this OH and H in such a way that is where we can find that is the OH is on the lower side and hydrogen is on the upper side. So in that case this kind of anomer is basically known as as we can see over here that is this is OH which is obviously we understand that is compared to this one it has a higher molecular mass as well as it is a bigger group and suppose if this two if we have and here we see the carbon is attached to the carbon which has a higher molecular weight or atomic weight and here we see the carbon is attached to the hydrogen so because of that we understand that is what is cis isomer and what is trans isomer so in that case basically you can find that is this OH and this CH2OH they are trans to each other and that's the reason this is basically known as alpha L ribofurenose while there is a formation of another isomer so therefore we could write the structure of the another isomer where we can find that is this is the oxygen atom to which this all other position it will be as it is so therefore I am writing over here as CH2OH here there is H OH H OH H and on this position suppose if there is presence of OH over here and H over here so here we can find that is this OH and this CH2OH they are in cis position and that is the reason the name of this one could be called as beta L ribofurinose so this is how basically we can convert the Fisher position formula of L ribose into the Hauer position formula so thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time. Till then, don't forget to subscribe. Eager channel. Thank you so much.